Right here, you're going to be able to invent 50 million reasons why you made a bad decision. That can become habit. Take some small battles and start with those. And then another one and another one, another one. You need a history of building tension successes in your life. Go ahead, who's got a question? Go for it. So, um, it's, it's been a theme in my life where I have, I kind of go back and forth between alternatives, like alternative paths in my life, and I have, uh, problems making like clear-cut decisions on things it could be career it could be about relationships um, and I just wanted to know kind of what your experience with, with that was and how that relates to the nice guy and everything you have trouble making decisions and sticking to them or even choosing or even making a decision are you afraid of making a wrong decision okay this is a great topic to end on uh, and to talk about for a little bit everybody knows who Napoleon Hill is right Okay, huh? Conquer, what? Okay, making smart ass comments up here. I'm watching you, man. Um, Napoleon Hill was at, wrote really pretty much the first personal growth book, Think and Grow Rich, right? And in there he said that, you know, he, he, uh, he was commissioned by Carnegie to um, interview the uh, world's top, what I think it was around 500 most successful men and women of the time. And he said the most successful men and women, this was a huge clue to me because I used to do what you're doing. Now, what he basically said is he, makes the, he has trouble making a decision. My habit in the past was to make a decision and then constantly question my decision. Who does that? Raise your hand. So I go make a decision. I start to take action. And as I start to take action, oh, this is the wrong thing. I, I need to go do something else. I'm going to go become a professional massage therapist. Oh, I'll get a few clients. Don't like doing that. Uh, you know, I'm going to go do this other thing. I'm gonna start this other business. And what happens when you do that? You don't get anywhere. So Napoleon Hill said that the most successful men and women of the time, all 500 of them, had the, the, the uh, ability to make a decision quickly and change their minds slowly, if ever at all. So think about it, if you, if you have trouble making a decision and then you change your mind quickly, where does your life go? Absolutely freaking nowhere, right? Because you're constantly changing your mind. And, you're, and then it takes you forever even to make the decision in the first place, okay? If you make decisions um, uh, quickly, but they change your mind quickly, you enter into tension every time you make a decision, but then suddenly you second guess yourself and then you back back out. You, you see what I'm talking about? So again, your life's not gonna go anywhere. Um, if you make decisions slowly, but change your mind slowly, if ever at all, your life can go somewhere. There's a, that's a lot of people that get very successful. Does this make sense so far? They, they, they're slow to get started, but when they get started, they stick to it. And that's the key, is the sticking to a decision and following it through to some level of success. Now, why does quick decisions and changing your mind slowly, if ever at all, create the most success in the world? You're not wasting time. You're entering into tension. Tension is a catalyst for change. Tension is a catalyst for change. You guys get that? Every change you're making this weekend is being caused by some form of tension in your body, in your nervous system, whether it's emotional or physical. If your subconscious is changing a belief, there's some form of tension causing a reaction that's causing the change. Does that make sense? Does everybody get this idea? I want to make sure. Is anybody lost by this idea? Anybody lost? Okay. So tension is a catalyst. Without tension, if you sit in your house and don't leave your house because you're afraid of everything and you, don't, you just kind of sit there and relax and you don't take action, what happens to your life? Huh? It stays the same. It stays the same. There's no tension causing a reaction, therefore causing changes to happen in your life. Proactive, action-oriented people get a lot of results. Okay? So we need that tension. Now, now, um, if you take a seed and you plant it in the ground and you bury dirt on top of it, that's how you activate the potential of that seed. The seed then can, uh, can the shell can rot, break, the roots can dig down, it can start to grow upwards through the dirt, fighting to get to the surface. But the first thing it does is it digs down and roots itself. So it actually digs deeper into the tension. 
it's developing its ability with tension before it sprouts and becomes, you even know it's there. So it goes on an inward journey before it goes on an external journey. So who's had that experience where they're working on themselves and they don't see anything externally, but they've got a lot going on internally? That's the inward journey part. You're working under the surface. You're working under the ground. How does bamboo work? You know that bamboo only sprouts up, what, every five, seven years, somewhere in that range? And it has five years? And it, just, and it shoots up like a rocket in that fifth year. What's it doing the other five years? Roots. It's digging down. It's doing the internal work so it can have that huge quantum leap of growth on the external. You're all doing that. And so tension is the catalyst for change. Now, when you go to step into tension, if you have a bad relationship to tension, whether emotional or physical, and it starts to build, the pressure starts to build, you're going to start something, you make a decision. How long does it take you to change your mind? <coughs> to second guess yourself, to doubt yourself? Not very long. Right. So is it the thing he chose to do? The thing he chose to do is completely irrelevant. <coughs> I'm going to argue that it's not really that what he chose isn't that important. He could have chose anything. What he doesn't like is most likely the tension. When it builds up, that's why he changes his mind so often. Because when the tension builds up, the pressure causes him, because he's got nice guy syndrome. Who in here has got nice guy syndrome? Raise your hand. The nice guy syndrome causes you to want to avoid the tension. Because every time the tension builds, there's the, there's the potential for judgment. There's a potential for ridicule. There's a potential for failure. There's a potential for letting somebody down. So every time that tension builds, what do you do? Run away. You run away. And you go find, you make up stories. Remember stories? All these stories start to come to your head. Well, this wasn't for me. I shouldn't be doing this. I should do something else. And you want to turn around and run the other direction. And then what happens when the tension all subsides? Then you suddenly come up with a new great idea. Well, maybe I should do this. And then after you've done this four, five, 10, 20, 30 times, running into the tension, then running away, how do you start to feel about your own ability to make a decision? Okay, how, how many people does this relate to? Okay, cool. Any of you not? Any of you not see this in your life? You know? Good. It used to be. Used to be, good. You've gone through it. So we call this the terror barrier. That, um, and women are the ultimate terror barrier, right? Right there, you know, hell, here's another one, creating a YouTube channel and putting out videos about what you feel and believe and watching all the comments. It sounds fine, but the moment you create that first video and put it out there, oh shit, what are they saying? Oh my God, they're commenting on this, they're commenting on that, ah, ah. And then all your stories start to come up, right? I didn't do this video good enough. We need to reshoot it 10 times. How many, have any of you ever done this? Yeah, they picked the best video too. Uh, they did, <laughs> of you? Yeah, I picked my best video. <laughs> there will always be somebody talking shit about your videos. You just got to realize that. Like I read through the comments now and I just laugh, especially, but we get a, a lot of my, a lot of the fans are really cool, but in the beginning, man, especially, oh, and you put a hot girl up there. Oh, Jesus Christ. The comments come in. I put one video with a hot girl up there. Guys will love them. And then there'll be the guys that hate them, hate them. She's a whore. She's a bitch. She's this. And I'm, <laughs> she did. She's a sweetheart. I look standing next to her. She's a total sweetheart. And I'm like, I'm like, uh, it just makes me laugh. Like, you don't even know her, you know, and you guys are already attacking her. Um, so, again, tension is the catalyst for change. How do you grow a muscle? You apply tension. So if you're, if you're not good with tension in the physical world, especially physical tension, your value to a woman, to the world, to life is, is not as good. You also need to be good with emotional tension so you can grow internally because your external world is going to be equal to your internal world. Your ability with your internal tension is gonna allow your external world to grow, your ability with money, your ability to go out and get things done, make stuff happen. So every time he turns around, runs away from the terror barrier, he's, he's teaching himself what? Tension's bad. Tension's bad. So what, how, what does he start to feel about himself? He's bad. He's insecure. He's insecure. I'm not good enough. I don't like myself. I'm, I, I, can't, I don't follow through with things. Inconsistency becomes the norm because you're building a habit of that. Does that make sense? Inconsistency becomes the norm because you build a habit of that. 
and you start to buy into that program and you build a story around it. So now he has a story. I did this, 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 and every time I quit or every time I stop or I start to start. And now I don't even want to start anymore. I don't even trust myself to start because the moment I know I'm just going to turn around halfway through it anyways. Is this accurate? Am I close to what you were talking about? Yeah. What are you feeling right now? Some, some shit's coming up? Yeah. Okay, I thought so. Just wanted to make sure. Because you're staring at me funny. Okay? <laughs> now, this... Try not to tell a story. Oh, they're going to happen. Just welcome them and, and disassociate. Like, see them, disassociate from them. Okay, there's that story. So this represents tension over here. Okay, this, this side of the scale. This represents time. Okay? There's my fancy M. Okay, so the scale works this way. This is the starting point. This is a start. And this is the, the goal, okay? If I want to hit any goal, especially a goal, let's say you wanna start your own business, you wanna meet a, uh, your wife, you wanna, you wanna have a threesome, I don't give a fuck what it is, okay? Uh, the goal, you're gonna start and the goal is gonna sound before there's any tension involved, what? Typically, if, unless you've had the experience of of not following this through. This is the exception. If you've tried this several times, now the, the even starting is gonna seem painful. But let's say you come up with a new idea. I wanna do that. And there's nothing on the line yet. There's no tension. Nobody's asked you to pay for it. You haven't invested any money. You haven't taken action. You haven't created your first YouTube video. You haven't asked a girl out. You haven't walked up on the street and given a compliment. I say, go give highs. She goes, that sounds easy. I'll go give a high. There's no tension involved yet. So what do you do? You fantasize about it. You say, that sounds great. I can't wait to do that. I want to start my own massage therapy business. That sounds fucking awesome, these massage therapists. Um, I want to go out and, and, and you know, meet that hot blonde. It sounds awesome. It all sounds beautiful. So then you start to move in that direction. And what happens? As Time represents your stories, by the way. The amount of stories you have is the amount of time it's going to take to hit the goal. Does that make sense to everybody? If I have a ton of stories around my ability to start a business, how uh, money doesn't grow in trees, everybody that owns a business is just ripping people off anyway, uh, my whole family's failed at businesses, I tried to start 10 other businesses and failed. Do you see that the time, the distance gets longer in your mind? Successful business gets farther and farther away because you have all these stories. Who sees that? Ray, please raise your hand. I want to make sure we're on the same page. So then as you start to move through your stories and you start to work towards the goal of hitting, of, be, of actually having paying clients that you're servicing, and the goal might be that I need 10 paying clients over a period of the next three months to really feel like a businessman because one, is probably just going to cause me to turn around and run back anyways, right? So you need at least two. So the goal uh, is, and maybe it's a certain amount of money that you want to make in a month to be able to quit your job. Maybe that's the goal. You see what I mean? So as he moves forward, and he starts to take action towards the goal, this is just like compounding interest, it's gonna start to go upwards. The tension is gonna spike as he's getting closer to the goal. As he gets really close to the goal, just like compounding interest, the tension is really gonna spike. Does everybody see this? His subconscious is gonna scream stories at him, thoughts, stories, feelings, the loudest as he's getting super close to the goal. As you're getting really close to crossing that line, you're going to have every fucking reason on the planet to turn around and run back. Who's had this experience? Your whole, your whole, everything inside you is going to want to do this. And you're going to be, I'm going to fail. I'm going to lose everything. I'm going to, I'm going to have to declare bankruptcy. Everything's going to fall apart. Nothing's going to work. And just like we're talking about approaching women and maybe first we're, we take you out and we say, do some highs. And you're like, ooh, a little tension. And then we say, okay, now do some stops, just ask for direction. A little more tension. Okay, stop, just cute girls and ask them direction. Okay, okay. Do you feel your grounding when you stop and talk to the girls? Yeah. Now I want you to ask for a phone number. Ooh, <clears throat> now I want you to, see what I mean? And then you say, now I want you to go up to the hottest girl you've seen and tell her she looks sexy today. Bam. Everything. I'm going to get a, what, did, what did Anthony say? I'm going to get arrested. Oh my God, I can't do that. I'm going to end up in jail. They're going to take me away. What was this? Do you remember his story about that? And so that's when he's hit right here. And then what happens? Once you finally step through this spike and you get to the other side, if you don't turn around, what happens when you cross that finish line? What happens in a football game when you, when you hit the end zone? 
Huh? Sure. Yeah, the tension goes down, nobody can touch you, you can dance, you can have a good time. Who's had that experience where suddenly you're working on a goal and it seems impossible and over and over your mind's telling you to quit, turn around, don't do it, stop. And then suddenly one day you wake up and you're like, oh, this doesn't bother me anymore. This actually seems normal, it's easy. Matter of fact, why was this ever hard? That's because you crossed the terror barrier. Okay, you've crossed this terror barrier. And now, your new baseline is up here. What you're most likely doing is turning around before you ever cross the goal line. Does everybody see this in their life? The most successful people in the world are phenomenal at this process. They get really good at enjoying the terror bearer. Fear is their friend. Their story's coming up. They disassociate from and laugh at them. Oh, there's that story telling me I'm going to fail. Who gives a fuck? Let's do it anyways. If I'm going to fail, let's fail now, like my old mentor said. You know, and let's just do it. Let's, let's frickin' fail. And they keep, they keep going through. And boom, these spikes happen. And, but they don't take them personally anymore. But the first time you go through one of these consciously, it's fucking scary. And what I'd recommend each of you do is go through your history and make a list of all the terror barriers you've actually made it through and come out the other side and where everything went quiet. And you're like, wow, that's cool. And get a, see, see how many of them there are. And so you can start to see a pattern in the history. But you might also have more that you've turned around on, which is building a habit of turning around and running away when the stories come up. Successful people don't turn around and run away when the stories come up. They meditate, they release, they move forward anyways, they process, they do it, okay? Just make everything on track right now, you guys getting it? Now, next piece. We gotta mix blue and red. This is how life works. Each one of these is a terror barrier. Here's your real goal. This is your goal of getting that hot, perfect, sexy girlfriend that you love being with. This is your starting point. Or, okay? And there's probably gonna be a whole bunch of terror barriers you're gonna go through on the way to completing the ultimate goal. A millionaire, you know, it's just getting your business. If you wanna make a, a million dollars a year in your business, just getting your business started and getting your first sale in could be a terror barrier. You know what I mean? Getting to, uh, to be able to quit your job, your day job, could be another terror barrier. And actually quitting it's another terror barrier. You see what I mean? And you're gonna go through these. It's not one terror barrier. That's why you wanna get good at recognizing and releasing on the terror barriers. So that ultimately climbing this ladder becomes fun. Your relationship to fear becomes fun. Who believes that fear can become fun? Okay. Who in here is, doesn't like to be afraid? Okay. Okay. Think about it. Are there people out there that are really good with fear? Let's jump out of a plane. Fuck it. Let's go for it. I've never done it. I don't know what'll happen. Let's do bungee jumping. Let's go. Uh, they're literally students will say, go approach that hot girl. Oh, fuck. I'm scared. Can't wait to do it. Let's do it. And they walk right over and talk to her. The other students are going, no way. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I'm not doing it. They have a different relationship to fear, don't they? So when the pressure is on, the ones who have a good relationship to fear are gonna push into the fear. The ones who don't are gonna run this way. Anybody read Losing My Virginity? Richard Branson, great book, about his life story. What was his relationship to fear like at a young age? Who's read it? Okay, what's his relationship to fear like? Well, his mom, he told the story about his mom when he was 10 years old. Yeah. Dumped him 10 miles away. 50 miles. It was 50 miles, it was 50 miles away. Even though someone would watch you. Yeah, he, he 50 miles away on a, a sack lunch and a bicycle said, find your way home. She was teaching him resilience and commitment. And he did it. it. Took him two days. He had the first day he slept at his cousin's. The next day he made it home. Okay. How about uh, when he was really little, he, he made a, how many parents would do this if you were a parent? He made a bet with his aunt while on a family vacation that he could swim a certain distance underwater and she'd give him like five pounds or something for doing it. And he's like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this happen. Let's do it. Let's do it. And his mom, so all weekend long, he was trying to swim this distance and couldn't do it. And they're like, oh, can't do it. 
can't do it. He tried over and over. So they're driving home from the weekend and they're just driving down some random road. And he's like, I want to do it again. I want to do it again. I want to try one more time. And his parents are like, well, we left. And he's like, but there's a river right there. And they're like, okay. They just pulled over to a random river and he got in it to go for it another time. He finally did it. What's his relationship to tension like? What's his family teaching him? Step into it, go for it. We don't quit. How many families would stop for that kid? Say, no, you tried, it's done, you failed. Family in America. <laughs> Think about it though. That's a different relationship to tension, isn't it? Now, how many of you are excited, get a little turned on in your body at the idea of stepping into tension? Because that's the male body. The male body or the masculine body likes this idea of physical tension, of challenge. Why did the pickup industry get so big? It's this challenge of going and scoring with a bunch of girls because they, because they don't have good challenges in their life anymore. They want to go out and pick up a ton of girls because that's, hey, that's a, that's a challenge. We're looking for something to conquer. As men in today's society, think about the middle class. What does the middle class teach you to value more than anything else? Security. Comfort and security. Comfort and security. So it's, it's drilled into you at what age? It's so in childhood, right? You need a good degree, you need a safe job, you need this, don't take risks, don't rock the boat. So let's say you graduate from, you go, to, you go to high school and your parents are like, you gotta go to college, you gotta go to college. Every parent wants you to go to college, right? Even though there's tons of uh, millionaires today saying that college isn't always the best bet anymore. It's, 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 it costs a lot of money for what? And, but gotta go to college. So then you go get that college degree. And you're like, but after I get that college degree, I'm gonna go travel the world for a bit, or I'm gonna go start a business, or I'm gonna go take some risk. And your parents are like, well, you just got the college degree. Why don't you go work for a bit? And then you work for a few years in the college degree, to, you know, and then the, what's the next thing? Well, you know, you've got, you got these few years in. Don't waste it, don't quit. You got this good job, this retirement and benefits. Why would you screw that up? And the whole time your passion, your, your dreams are dying. Your, your, your love of life is dying. Because, why? Because there's no tension in your life. There's no terror barriers. There's nothing to conquer. There's nothing to battle. There's nothing to go through. Your sense of purpose is dying. And a man without purpose, passion, without out going out and conquering the world, or as David Data would say, fucking the world open, that guy, how attractive is that guy to women? Repulsive. Repulsive. There's this woman um, I talked about earlier today. Her name is Hattie. And she uh, lives in New York. She's over 80 years old. And uh, there's all kinds of little new, you can look her up on YouTube. There's news, news reports on her. And she's on Tinder all the time in, in, in New York. And, pick, uh, and she loves to date guys in their 20s. And she's in her 80s. And she gets one guy after another in her 20s. And she's vibrant and alive and exercises every day to be in shape for them. And she's, she's full, so full of passion. And they ask her every time, why, why do you want to date guys in their 20s? Why don't you date younger guys or older guys? She said, because the older guys have done it. You know, they've conquered the world. They've done this or that. And they don't have that passion, that drive. And these young guys, they get, you talk to them and they got all these dreams and passions and they want to conquer the world. And that's the guy I'm looking for. The guy who's still ready to go out and go through terror barriers is basically what she's saying. He's ready to go fight another dragon and another dragon and another dragon. And so following your dream, this thing you commit to, to some level of completion before choosing something new is very important for your subconscious mind. Because in the middle, you're going to have all kinds of reasons why this thing was not meant for you. Right here, you're going to be able to invent 50 million reasons why you made a bad decision. And that, have, that can become habit. So a level of completion, and at that level of completion where you've shown some results from your, the thing that you're choosing uh, to some degree, you've had a real experience, you really went for it in some way, then you can reevaluate and make a new decision. And from that experience, make another decision and another decision. But if you have, have a habit of quitting in the middle, that's a problem. Okay, is this hitting home for you more? Yeah, and I think a lot of it is uh, just second guessing myself constantly yeah well that's I've made up to this point. that's the story that comes up right in here when you start to get in here you're second guessing and you've second guessed let's say you've second guessed and ran back who knows how many times what happens this time when you go to do it 
You're second guessing from here. The thought of starting it starts the tension right away. Starts raising the tension up because you got that habit program. So now more important than ever, you need to follow through to some level of fruition on something. I take some small battles and start with those. And then another one and another one, another one. You need a history of building tension successes in your life. You need to build a history of successes with tension in your life. Successes, not attempts. So attempts are great, but successes. So what I would do is start with very small, low level tension items. I tell people this all the time, create a tension journal and go out, confidence journal, so same thing. And you're gonna go out and select two, three, four, five things a day that you're gonna work on around tension. And you're gonna go, maybe uh, the things you're gonna do, not work on. And you're gonna look at it from a scale of one to 10, how much, like if I'm gonna walk over and tell, ask that cute girl the time, or so tell her she's fucking hot, let's say. I, mean, you're, I have to tell you, you're just so fucking hot. That's, that could be a 10. 10 is like the max amount of tension I'm gonna blow up. My head's about to blow up right now. So what's a, because he has a habit of turning around, what would be a three? What could he do that's a three? Excuse me, um, do you know where a coffee shop is? Maybe that's a three. And then journal how that's a success. And then do another one and journal how that's a success. Work at the low level, get used to twos and threes and fours for a while. Build up your, your, your successes on small little things over and over and over and over again till you can start to get to the big things because now you have enough little successes. You can start saying, you know what, I'm gonna attempt a six today or a seven. And then you can start picking long-term goals that work around the same thing. These are just immediate little things you can do, but they'll start building your relationship to tension. And when you do this stuff, you wanna look at what does the tension feel like in my body? Where do I feel it? Where do I normally wanna stop? Can I relax into that? Can I take another step into it? And another step, you wanna build a relationship to this tension, get comfortable with it. Think of the most successful people in the world. Who's somebody you admire, whether it's an actor, a sporting person, somebody famous? Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Is he good with tension? I don't know. Let me think about it. Yeah. <laughs> Who's somebody else? Dwayne Elon Dwayne, is he good with tension? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Elon Musk. Is he good with tension? Yep. Yep. Elon Musk, is he good with tension? Yeah. There's a reason you admire these guys. How about jobs? What's our, what are jobs you see people out in that you admire? Jobs. Huh? Is that in jobs? What, what are types of jobs that you admire? Salesmen. Salesmen. Okay. They, act, they have to be good with tension to be good. Soldiers have to be... What? Surgeons. Surgeons. Very good with tension. They have to be steady under pressure, right? Because people die. Law. Law. An attorney could be... Especially some of these attorney shows. We make all kinds of shows about these attorneys, right? But police, policemen too, potentially. What about firemen? How, how many women go nuts over firemen? I haven't even put out a fire. <laughs> yeah, there's calendars dedicated to firemen and their fucking fire outfits. The fireman is the job of, uh, it's the epitome of the guy, masculine guy who's selfless, who saves lives and burn, runs into burning buildings. Oh, you know, totally present. He represents being good with tension, that job, just wearing the outfit. You see what I mean? It represents everything that, that women want in a man. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Huh? You're a fireman? There you go. <laughs> yeah. And so that side of you is, is very, like, how many, what, is, is it the same in England? Is it the same in England? Yeah, about? ridiculously so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you should see some of the firemen that come around, like, I mean, flag out of my Yeah. And then how do the women react when the firemen, when the fire engine's coming down the street? It's a fallacy. Yeah. yeah. You think it's a fallacy? I think some of them feel a bit disappointed when they do so. <laughs> but it's a, but it, the mindset is when they see the fire engine, there's this, oh, fireman, right? Yeah, and that's what it represents. Okay? So, is this connecting with you guys? Yeah. So, tension is, is, a, is a beautiful, developable, a developable, is that a word? Yeah, you can, you can create a skill. You can create this skill and develop it over time, just like lifting weights. And you go into the gym at first, start light. Warm your body up, get used to it, start to play with it, develop a sense of, of success around the lifting weights at a small level and build that on those successes over time and get better and better and better and better and better and better. And then eventually you're lifting huge amounts of weight. Suddenly you're, you're no longer a 90 pound weakling, but you're, you know, you're, you're 250 pounds and you're just squatting huge amounts of weight and you walk right into the tension totally calm. 
Do you think I would, this, do you remember the, what I did the other day, the testing with the woman, uh, the girl that was here? Vivian, I think her name was? Yeah, Vanessa. I, Vanessa, thank you. I didn't start out with the ability to do that. I was terrible at that shit, guys. In the beginning, I was fucking walled off, shut off, couldn't feel shit. The reason I can do that is because I've been lifting weights in this area for a while, playing with emotional tension over and over and grounding it through my body over a little bit more every day. 1% more, one terror barrier after another. I can't tell you how many terror, I don't even know how many terror barriers in this area I've been through around the idea of a woman rejecting me, making fun of me, of getting tested and pushed back and all this kind of stuff. Just one after another after another until eventually these abilities start to develop and I'm like, okay, this is actually kind of getting fun. This is getting interesting. Things pop, things change, things shift. But I had to go through a lot of these and I had to keep going through until there was a break. I couldn't just stop in the middle because I'm like, oh, sh shit, she likes me. Yeah, I don't know. She doesn't like me. Oh, I'm, I'm fucking up. I'm, oh, I've got to get out of here and then not come back because you will fuck up at first. Things will seem like right there here that they're getting worse before they get better. That's normal. I can't tell you how many times I'll start something and I swear it's going wrong and then suddenly it just goes right because I kept going. So, um, is there a way to recognize these terror barriers in your own life? Like, there's areas of my life that I can just pass through any like, tension related things, mainly physical things. But when it comes to like women, I'm that's emotional sure. tension. So your terror barrier is emotional tension. You just you just defined it. Okay. <laughs> so when it comes to grounding out emotions, you have a terror barrier. Okay. So you got to get in front of more women start grounding and, and so what are ways you can do that around threes a lot of these field exercises are going to get you in front of more women if you get into workshops we'll put you in front of women but uh, a lot of this going out and stopping talking having conversations just relaxing and then slowly saying bolder and bolder things doing bolder and bolder things slowly like when you're lifting a lot of weight you just add a little weight at a time and this is where you guys fuck up all the time okay i went out and asked five girls at the time now i'm gonna you know and <laughs> You just try to jump like right to the top and you're barely able to talk to them yet. You can't even sweater out some words and then you're beating yourself up for not taking her home and having sex with her. Like get to the, get another win and another win and another, but keep moving in the right direction. And eventually they will compound into something. Okay. That's for approaching dating and relationships is the same thing. You're learning, but the, the key is to learn to, 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 to welcome and feel all those emotions and stay in your masculine while you do it. Don't become a woman. Don't become feminized while doing it. Does that make sense? So that means a lot of guys start to act like the girl. They become more girly and more fluid and, and flowy. And girls will give you all kinds of validation for that, but they won't fuck you. They won't date you. They'll be your girlfriend. You ever seen that guy? You ever been that guy? I had this student come in once and he, I put him on, it was years ago, it was a long time ago, but I, I filmed everybody and he was, He's like, he's thinking, I nailed this, I nailed this. And I put him on camera and I show him how he's just one of the girls. He's giggling like a girl, moving like a girl. The girls are laughing, he's flowing like the girl. And then finally he's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I thought I nailed it because they were laughing and having such a good time with me. I had no clue. And he said, and then, then I started talking to him more and he said, yeah, I talk to girls all the time and I always think I'm doing great, but Actually, I'm a virgin. I'm like, interesting. That guy ended up, he took to heart what I said, and I showed him a lot of stuff, and he did a lot of work. And it was hard for him at first. And I remember him getting his first date, his first kiss, his first girlfriend, everything. <laughs> he went nuts. Next thing you know, he went from a 26-year-old virgin to having sex with more women by like 32 than any he, he, the average human male will ever have sex with in probably 10 lifetimes. He actually, he, he started dating like crazy, he became a sex coach, he became a swinger, he started traveling around. He, his record, I think he said was, he slept with nine girls on one night at a sex party in an orgy. And uh, I don't know, that, I'm not saying that's a good goal to have. <laughs> he might've taken it a little too far the other direction. And uh, not something I, I plan to do, but do you see the point? He built a little bit at a time to accomplish a goal that he had, that he, he still today, he loves that he did that. 
You know, he's not ashamed of it at all. Okay? And so, can you see, that's a huge transition, isn't it? How does this apply in the real world with women? You guys are, are a lot of you are here for women, right? And we said we we're going to do more demos, but women represent life too. If I'm going to go make a sale, I'm going to step into tension with you. Hey, how you doing? And if I'm like this, hey, how you doing? I, I want to tell you about my massage therapy services. Do you feel the difference between, hey, how you doing? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, how's your back? Or I want to talk about massage service. You feel that, that that little change causes a different reaction, doesn't it? If I'm like this, hey, hey, I, you know what? I'm a massage therapist. And this is how a lot of guys on the street do it, right? And they're walking them down. They got stuff. They talk to you right in your face. Right. They're not feeling you. So this applies like that. Your ability to control the level of tension is just as important as stepping into tension. So if I step into too much tension, I'm pushing tension too hard. I'm, it's like I got a fire hose on full blast, knocking them over, right? Versus giving them the, the, the and then hose analogy, the hose represents the masculine, the guiding force, the water represents the emotion. So when I look at you, there's always a sense of a conduit, which is the hose. There's a sense of energy, a framework, and then a flow. If I push that and start to push the flow, it becomes too powerful. It feels like an attack. But if I relax into it and start to back up and become more receptive, then it feels more like a flow and we can have a better communication. And if I go too far, it's just kind of like fades out a little bit and I can start to just like, hey, yeah, how are you doing? Start to pull way back and everything starts to change. Does this make sense to everybody? So there's this flow analogy. So your ability with tension starts to get subtler and subtler. I can start to as he comes at me with emotional tension, I can start to ground that attention, that tension with my masculine. I can start to relax into it more. And this doesn't just apply with dating, this applies with relationships. As your girlfriend says, we need to talk, this is bothering me, your ability to relax into that and receive that emotion and ground it is really valuable to her, is really important. And so it all comes back to this again. I mean, how often have you had a woman say, well, we need to talk, and you went right into a terror barrier? Huh? You suddenly you're like, oh shit, everything's wrong. You start to freak out inside because you're not good with the emotional tension. We need to talk means we're going to share some emotional tension right now. That's literally what she is saying, is she not? I have some emotional tension I'm going to give you. How are you going to handle it? And what do you do typically? I'm going to analyze it, I'm going to get analytical about it, I'm going to defend it, instead of just grounding it and seeing through that. Like Dr. Glover says, you know, it really comes down to, is she feeling connected? To, most of the time, she's not feeling connected to me when I say that. So most of the time, she just needs some connection. That's all she's really saying. But you hear all the words and you want to argue about them. Instead of just letting her in. Our job's not hard, guys. And women aren't as complicated as some people say they are. They seem complicated because we buy into all that emotional, their emotional turmoil. But if you don't buy into their emotional turmoil but still feel them, they become way less complicated. If you don't take what they say personal and you're just there with them. But if you have this sense that everything they say means something about you, that what they say is literal, and when she says, I don't, I'm not feeling you right now, means she's going to leave me, and you start buying into all those bullshit realities, then yeah, that's gonna destroy the relationship. But the more you can just let her in and let her come through you and start to be there, be that rock, the more she's just gonna keep surrendering into your arms over and over and over again. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna do some demos and, uh, with the guys. Mm -hmm. And we were talking a lot about tension and emotional tension and how it, how it works. Um, any, any questions coming up before we get started? No. To me, it was clear. Uh, I know why I was running away. And you had to do something with guilt. But I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, no, like, to me personally. <laughs> you guys get it? He's not ta there's no context around what he's talking you know, about. Like, what you were explaining right now, like, I kind of recognize the, the terror barrier where you say we pull out, like, where the energy starts, like, crashing. Yeah. And then, like, to me, it was, like, the story that I was telling myself was based on guilt. Not guilt, but uh, well, it was based on guilt, but it was, like, on different stages in my life, and then that caused me to like. Run so away. basically, you're saying that he's right. That's what you're doing. It was just like uh -huh. relief for myself too. Okay, good. Okay, I'm gonna have you come up with y'all. Come on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play. We're gonna do a demo, but I want you to think about it in the form of tension, 
physical and emotional tension. He's going to use his masculine to ground her emotions. Does this make sense? I and to connect. Emotional or no, no, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep it pretty simple. Um, okay. So first thing, uh, just walk up, and say hi. I want to see. I want to see a baseline on him. So go, go for it. Just walk up and say hi to her. Hi. hi. Okay. Good. So where is his energy? I want to see where you guys are at before she says anything. Where's his energy? Hmm. Back. Throat. Uh, no, no. You stay here. <laughs> okay, good. Where's it at for you? He's uh, up and back. Yeah, and he's a little pulled this way? Yeah, I would say. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. so your head is a little turned. But he had a very firm handshake. Good. And despite all this, his physical presence when he shook hands with me was very good. Okay. Good. So we're going to adjust you just a bit. Mm -hmm. Have you look right at her. Okay, good. L lift your head just a hair. And maybe like this. A is it bit? crooked? No, 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 the other way. Yeah. There you go. Good. Yeah. Now feel your heart. Feel your heart. Ask this to open like a window. So the key is we want to relax down. We want to feel from our spine. So first he wants to feel his back. And then he wants to relax into the front of his body and ask it to open. Imagine there's a window here. And you could just ask it to open. Um, but he wants to feel his heart through his back. And then you have to take her in. You remember I had talked about the conduit. I talked about the tension in the conduit. Do you guys get that? Okay, so look up and notice the tension decreases. Look down and come down till the tension increases and connects to her again. And then soften in the tension a little bit. Ask it to soften so you can feel the flow through the conduit. If it was like a wire or a hose, you could feel the flow of electricity or water. Okay, and then you do the same thing with your heart. You feel the heart and you ask it to connect. Okay, good. Good. Now he's starting to feel a little more emotion. Would you agree? Yeah, and he dropped into the neck area, throat okay. area. That's, are you aware of that? Do you feel it? Okay. Yeah. Now, did you notice before he was defending against the tension, her emotional tension with a wall, more of a wall. Do you guys get that? But now he's starting to let her in just a little bit. And that's what his masculine is designed to do, is to let her emotional tension run through and ground so she can, she can be felt by his masculine. Does this make sense to you guys? But he's scared to do that fully. What does it feel like in there? You can speak. A little nervous. Okay, good. What's the thought you're having right now? The one thought running through your head. Any thought? That I um, shouldn't be connecting. That's how I feel. You shouldn't be. So that's your saying that you hear that thought going over and over? What's the emotion that goes with it? Fear. fear. So I shouldn't be connecting in fear. Where do you feel the fear in your body? My heart. Okay, good. Can you welcome that fear? Can you welcome the thought? Yes. And welcome the thought too. I shouldn't be connecting in the fear. It goes with it. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything under that fear? No. Can you let the fear go? Yeah. And there's still more fear. Can you let more go? Yeah. And more? Yeah. Uh, is he changing? Uh, yeah, but he's, if, I think he's overusing his head because I just got a bit of a headache. Okay. So, um, relax your... Okay, good. So good. Now feel body. right here and relax the forehead a little bit. Mm. Just right in here. Relax. And see if you can feel down the front of the body a little more. But he definitely has like a okay. string of emotion now, here. Okay. We're going to try something to see if we can increase it. Take two steps back. Mm -hmm. Good. Now look at her again, dropping that tension. There we go. Mm -hmm. You feel the difference? He's a lot softer now. Now he can connect to her. Okay. Say hi from here. Hi. Good. Good. Now see if you can feel that tension and then connect. And see if you can feel the emotion flowing through the conduit. There's that sense of like looking into somebody. Like if you look at me, now turn your head towards me. 
I connect, I create a conduit right here, and then I relax until I can feel your emotions. I can get curious. I can start to wonder. If I push too much and get serious, this is me trying to make it happen. I'm pushing. Do you feel the mm -hmm. difference? Mm -hmm. Now, that's what you're doing typically. So then I want you to back off just a little, but not so much everything disappears. Do you feel that everything disappear? Mm -hmm. And then I come back and I can have this nice flow with you. Do that with her, okay? Good. Now you have to, to do that, you have to get curious about what she's feeling. And since the eyes are the gateway to the soul, what do you feel when you look at her? Calm. Good. Now see if you can take a step in and be curious with each step. You take one step and just stop. Notice the tension belt, didn't it? Did you feel it rise? Okay, good. Now, what you have to do is adjust the tension for the added amount of tension because you got closer. And you have to adjust the feeling in your heart. And you get curious again at this new distance. And then take another step. And as he gets closer, he gets what? He gets, I, at Pulls first, it back. he just had a lot of um, chest with tension and pressure, mm -hmm. and with the last step, it just went all the way back. Yeah, notice, we do, if you get less emotion the closer he gets. Do you guys notice that? And so she feels, it's hard, she feels less on him the closer he gets. And that's the, that's the challenge. It's his nervous system sees her as a threat. Take two steps back again, and watch. See, just relax. Yeah. <laughs> so his nervous system sees her as a threat, so his nervous system is trying to push her away. He, he has no conscious control of it, that's part of his unconscious. So take a step in again. Take two steps in. Yeah, better. Take two steps back. See, it gets better every time. Take two steps in. Yeah, he's starting to have fun with it now. Huh? Okay, do it one more time. See if you feel better and then start to control that flow of tension. Good, good. Now say hi. Hi. Good, it's getting better, isn't it? Yeah. Do you feel how much lighter he is now? Do you guys feel it? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Now shake your hand, say hi. Hi. Good. Now, I would want to take you to the next level, which is more freedom, more freedom of expression. Because right now, it's, it's, he's got this limited range of expression. Okay? So keep this connection. And lift your arms above your head for me. Just kind of move around, move around. Do something a little embarrassing, not much, just a little. There you go, there you go. Now, now say hi. Hi. Good. Okay, good. Now step, I want you to step in and increase the tension more. Just step in really close, feel it, and then step back. Amplify it, enjoy it. Now, now step back. He didn't enjoy that, did he? <laughs> hands, like my hands were shaking because his hands were like, uh. Yeah, did you feel that? Yeah. yeah. So again, look at me. I want you to step into the tension, have fun with it, and then step back. Do you feel that difference? Yeah. Do that a couple times and tell you, you go in and out. If you don't feel uncomfortable, it's okay. You see you're pulling back, so step back. Get back in your body. Feel it. Do it a couple times. It's not, that's better. Mm. That was much better. Do it again. Say hi again. Hi. Good. Now, he said hi over here. Say mm -hmm. hi into her. Now turn towards me. You went hi. And I want you to look into her. Hi. Look, say it into her. Hi. Okay, good. Step out, step in, do it again. Enjoy the whole process. Hi. Hi. It's better. He still pulled back a tad, didn't yeah. he? Okay, now we're not trying to get him to where he's gonna walk up and literally say hi like that in, in real life. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. But what we wanna do is play with the extremes so that when he walks up and just says hi normally, it's easy and relaxed. Okay? How are you feeling right now? Good. Good, do you like it? Yeah. Good, so this is model work. By the way, look at his shirt. <laughs> okay? Okay, good. Okay, give him a round of applause. You're welcome. Now, model, model work is done, we have a million different ways of doing it. She's done a lot of it with us. Um, and it's all about different aspects of energies you convey while you do stuff, okay? So the stepping in and out is part of it. Can you be playful? Can you have fun with it? 
can you not make it mean something? Can you just, you know, <laughs> not, not make it so serious? So you can start to stand in front of somebody eventually when you play with these ranges and just be normal. Hey, what's up? And then how are you doing? And, and stuff like that. The same with touch. If I touch her hand, okay, is my hand grounding her? See, I need to be taller for her. <laughs> I can this? do my heels. Nah, it's all right. <laughs> um, is my hand grounding her? Like, am I grounding down this leg? Or if I tighten, like watch, I'm gonna tighten my perineum, tighten my leg, start to pull up and gra now hold her hand. Does it feel different? Yeah, I feel all my, like this side is very, very grounded. As I, exactly. Side. Very solid, I would say. Okay. Safe. Okay, and as I watch, I'm gonna switch again. Mm-hmm. It, it lo loosens a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was tightening, and then I'm relaxing. And she's, a, she's feeling me tighten and relax. And as I start to, and so what happens is the hand can become fun, can become pleasurable, or I can do this. If I grab her hand, now I'm trying, what's this? This is dominance. Yeah. It's trying to like control you, me, dom, dominate me. Okay, now, now I'm gonna switch it again. What's that? I was say like pull. To yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's an energetic pull. You guys don't know you're doing this stuff, but one energy I'm pushing on her, the other energy I'm pulling on her versus just, if I just sit here and if I take her hand and just literally, I'm gonna reset it and just kind of enjoy holding her hand a little bit and feel. Yeah, it's very nice, it's very soft, very pleasant. It's and, very enjoyable. Okay, and so these are the energies at play. Got tons of this. We got it in the voice too. I could look at her and be like, I could be talking to her, but I could be like, hey, how you doing? My name's Brian. What's yours? And what, what does that feel like? Uh, kind of up, up here, but all open and uh, welcome. Open, friendly, yeah. but open. not, but all upper energy, yeah, right? All, all up. I mean, he's not allowing himself to feel, and I'm not feeling him. I feel just all the way here. She, so she'll feel safe, but not a, she can't get attracted by doing that. There's the no way. <laughs> yeah, let's hang out. Let's go do something yeah. together, you know? And so I could actually walk up too and I could, um, I could speak like, hey, how you doing? You know, or I could speak, hey, how you doing? And there's a difference. What was the difference in those two? One was like you're trying to connect with her, like, I don't know. Yeah. So watch the difference. Hey, hey, how you doing? This is me just kind of talking. Mm -hmm. Energy's out and it's wide. And then if I look into her, hey, how you doing? Do you feel the more penetrating nature of, of, of the voice now? I, go ahead. It's, it's reaching me and goes through me. Yeah, and that's intent. I can feel that happen. Another one is I could be like, um, hi, my name's Brian, what's yours? And how many guys do this? <laughs> oh, so many guys. <laughs> what did I just do? Pull away. Pulled. I turned away on her, just a hair, didn't I? But she can feel that, that I want to get away. And so she's going to respond to that. Okay, he wants to get away, doesn't want to talk to me. <laughs> Okay, now the opposite is true too. She could look at me and look into me very seriously, if you can do this, say something like, we, <laughs> say we need to talk. <clears throat> something like that, yeah. We need to talk. Yeah. And so I actually had a little response to that. Okay, mm -hmm. go, do it again. We need to talk. And what you want to be able to do is not get nervous and reactive to that. And then say, okay, and then now I'm looking into her a little deeper. And that'll let her know did you feel the point at which I went a little deeper? Yeah. And I'm, I'm right here present with her. Now, what I'm not going to do is this. Say we need to talk is what the average guy does. We need to talk. And then start to Worry, pull back, pull, pull away. Back, think a lot, analyze what that's wrong, mm -hmm. blah, blah, what's going to okay. happen. Okay. And it's energetic. So what I'm showing you is behind the words. That's why I'm not using words. Like if she said we need to talk, I'd say, okay, well, let's talk. Let's. And then if, if I feel that serious tone, I'm going to lock in with her and, okay, let's, let's talk about it. What's up? And I'm going to have a conversation, but I'm not going to wall off to her. Do you feel the difference, guys? And, and it already makes you feel safe and not so scared because when or like tensed as a woman, when a guy is just just receives you and is there there for you, you feel safe to talk and it, it speak from a calmer place, from a like more as logical as a woman can place. OK, and I'm going to. To, to illustrate this, because what she said is right on. It's, it's beautiful. I thank you for saying that. And what I want to do to illustrate this is who wants to be on camera really quick? <laughs> okay. I want to use uh, somebody specific I'm looking for who raised their hand. I'll use you. Come here. Because there's a reason. So I want you to stand in front of her, walk up, connect. Hopefully we can get this straight in your head. Ask, push on your heart a little bit, open the heart. Now, do you feel the difference? When I look at her, there's a sense of openness. 
Okay, I'm connecting, I'm feeling her. When he's looking at her, do you feel how numb he is right here? Okay, so lift your chest a little. Lower your head and lift your chest. Straighten your head. Ask your heart to open. He's already sad at the connection, right? Take a step back. Okay, good. Ask your heart to open. Can you, and see if you can find a point where you enjoy her. A little better. Okay, good. This will work with this. Okay. Now feel her through that left eye. Now, just say to him, we need to talk, and give him that serious tone. We need to talk. How does he feel? <laughs> he's, like, he's like a wall. He's like, he's like <laughs> nope. Did you feel a reaction in your body? I did. What was the reaction? The reaction was very similar, you said. It was kind of a wall up, but it was like a reaction when like, it was a shock. Yeah. What? Yeah. That was the reaction. And that's what happens, is the nervous system is programmed to do that. Even though I just told him not to do that, the nervous system's programmed to do that. So the more he gets comfortable meditating, practicing, doing all the practices we talk about, the, the faster, the more he'll be able to reach a point where she'll say, we need to talk, and he'll be able to step into it. Be like, okay, let's talk about it. Even if he pops out, you can pop right back in. Okay, oh, oh, no, coming back down. Let's go sit over here and talk. Can I add something? Sure. When a guy that does this to a woman, like, rolls up, it instantly lights all our alert about you like, oh, so I have a reason, I actually have more reasons to be worried than I thought initially because he has something to hide. <laughs> That's it, uh, because we catch that and we're like, oh, so there's something more wrong than I thought that it was. <laughs> so. And most of the time what she's looking for in that moment more than anything else, and I'm not gonna say 100%, but most of the time is more connection. And you give her the opposite of that. And so, 90% of, of what she says after we need to talk is going to reference wanting you to feel into her deeper in some way, shape, or form, to be more present with her, more connected to her. And, and most guys just do the opposite of that immediately, and that's why women start to chase. Mm -hmm. They're chasing that connection. Does this connect with everybody? Okay, cool. Give, give, uh, give her a thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I want you to see how a lot of the concepts we're talking about have an energetic underpinning or, or an, emo, uh, 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 an emotional component, but it's really energetic. The emotions are energy, right? The energy is in motion, is, is an emotion. And so when we talk about energetic modeling, sometimes I call it, emo, uh, uh, or energetic embodiment, sometimes I call it emotional embodiment. <coughs> and it's really getting in alignment and flow with all these emotions, which are just energies and how they transmit from one person to the next and how we can stop the transmission of them. We can shut them off. We can wall off. Earlier with Jonah, when I connected with you and dropped in with you, what was really happening there was whenever he felt that shame, he'd wall off here and wouldn't connect to the outside world. So all he was connected to was his internal inner world. So the energetic component of connection to the outside world was disconnected. For him to release that shame, he needs a, a balanced connection between his inner and outer world. All of you have an inner and outer world, don't you? You have an inner experience and an outer experience, do you not? Yes. And if he gets so w wrapped up in the emotion of shame that he was feeling, that all he can feel is his inner world, and he loses touch with the outer world, he won't be able to release it. He won't be able to process that emotion. So what I did was I created a connection to me to hold that space so he could feel the inner and outer world. So he could actually release it. Because we get really scared when we feel a deep, painful emotion of connecting to the outer world because people will see us. They'll judge us. They'll make us right. They'll make us wrong. So we go inside and hide. And then we get to hold on to that emotion really tightly. What happens to a pool of water, like a lake, if, it's, if it stops losing its circulation? And it's just stuck, no circulation anymore. What will happen to it? It dries. Stagnates, dries up. You see what I mean? Same thing happens to us. This is why meditation can be, and not always, so powerful. Meditation can be an amazing tool because it can stop all those processes. Because you naturally, a baby is naturally, you notice a baby is free and connected to everything. It can't control its body anymore yet. It's all flailing, but it feels everything, the inner and the outer world. It doesn't even know the difference between the inner and outer world. It's all one to them. And that's the experience we're chasing again. We're chasing it from a place of total, uh, of understanding, of consciousness, where the baby is a little more unconscious. It can't even, it can't discern, has no discernment of what's what yet. As we wake up and come back to that space, we have all that discernment now. 
I can feel this, I can feel that, I can flow, I can walk, I can talk, I can move, and I'm back to that free state again. And I feel like I'm one with everything again. Somebody tell me one thing you've learned. I want to get a couple things as we close out the, the weekend. Accountability. Accountability, it's super important, yeah. And mixed with consistency, it's yeah. off the charts. Yeah. Changing your relationship to fear. Changing your relationship to fear. That's a, I have a whole talk on that that I love to do sometimes. It's, it's, uh, but we do it in the experience weekend. It's super important. Taking tension slowly. Yes, that's huge. I've never said, anybody, said it quite that way, but yeah, taking tension slowly. Because that's how, like, I have a friend who's one of the strongest, well, I think he's currently the strongest man in the world. Uh, Martins Lisi, does anybody know who he is? He's a great guy. He, uh, he didn't build those muscles by taking tension quickly. He would have hurt himself very slowly over many, many years. And he, he built into the strongest man in the world. So, did you have one? Yeah. When a, an opportunity or a door opens, like, don't shut it. Don't shut it. Don't yeah. Shut it yeah, that's exactly it. So guys, you've learned a lot this weekend. You've learned a lot about tension. You've learned a lot about embodiment. You've learned a lot about the nice guy syndrome. You learned a lot about toxic shame. And you learned a lot about how you're holding yourself back. And for some of you, that could mean more coaching. It could mean going off and I see exactly what I need. I need to go do the practices. But, uh, but it, it all basically comes down to you. You're the key denominator. You're the common denominator in all of this. You have the stories going on inside you. You have emotions going on inside you. And that's the only thing that's really holding you back from the life of your dreams. Whatever you want. Think about it for a minute. Is there anything else? I mean, I'll use women, for example. If you walked outside, if I could delete all your experiences with women and you had no negative experiences at all. Matter of fact, maybe you never even remember what a woman looked like and you walk outside and you have this sense of wonder because you have no negative experiences and you see a woman for the first time. She's standing right there. How might you be with her? You have no fear, you have no doubt, you have no worry, you have no shame. What would you do? Walk right up and go, hi. Who are you? What are you? Oh my God, you're interesting. What is that? Oh, check. you smell really good. And how would she probably react to that innocence? How might she react to you? See, you're built to be good with women. Your bodies are designed to be good with women. You're male. That's polarity. And there's a huge part of you that already knows how to do it. But the thing standing between you and your goal is basically um, your emotions. Is fear. It's fear, doubt, and worry. It's programs you've installed inside of you. And all you have to do is delete those programs to have what you want. You have to process, welcome, delete, let go of. Who's aware of the programs holding them back from being the guy they want to be now? Okay, good. Who's willing to do anything to stop them? Some people aren't, to be honest. I'm willing to do anything up to a point. Um, I'm willing to do anything, but didn't, you know, but not that, you know, I don't want to give up my weekends. Oh, I don't want to give up my weeknights. I, I got a bowling league. I don't want to give that up. Oh, you want me to go talk to a beautiful woman and face my shame? I don't want to do that. You know, but anything else I'll do. Uh, you want me to buy this program that might help me? Uh, it sounds like the right thing. I want to do it, but now I can't do that because it costs money. Did you see what I mean? Like, there's so many things you can do. You showed up this weekend. You guys are already ahead of the pack just by showing up here. You can see that your lives can change. But if you're not willing to step into tension, remember, powerful people make up their mind quickly and change their mind slowly, if ever at all. If you're not willing to take those actions to do what needs to be done, you don't deserve the change. Now, when I think of my life, what did I do? I gave up everything to have everything. I literally swore off, uh, I wanted to start a business, I swore off jobs and I walked away. Lived on a couch for a year, struggled, barely ate. I gave up everything. I didn't care if I went bankrupt. I didn't care if I lost everything. And that's why my life turned around and I have so much. Same thing with women. When I reached the point that, I, I, remember, I remember where I was. I was, in, I was in my 30s actually, and I was standing there. And I said to myself, if I get any older and I don't resolve this problem now, 
I'm going to be a miserable old man alone or married to somebody I can't stand. And I don't want to be that guy. I don't, want to, I don't want to live like that. And I looked at everybody around me that I knew that was living like that, and I said, that just looks like hell. And I made a commitment. A, until I get to the point where I really love my life, I'm never getting married. And B, I'm going to get this resolved. I don't care how many years or what it takes. I'm going to change this. I'm going to face every single one of my stories. And I don't care what it costs. And I went for it. And again, in that area, I got what I want because I burned all the bridges. I was willing to lose everything to have everything. The biggest program you're going to have to face is your middle class program that holds you back. This whole idea that comfort and security is the most, that I need comfort and security. Those who chase comfort and security are going to have very painful lives, potentially. But those who are very comfortable with being uncomfortable can have very powerful lives. If you look at the most powerful people in the world, they're really good with being uncomfortable. Richard Branson's a great example. Okay? And you look at the people who are chasing the most comfort. A homeless person could be the example. I don't want to go push myself. I don't want to take risks. And they end up with nothing. They end up on the street. I'm not saying they're all that way. But a lot of them. With a very, very, very small world. Now, we talked earlier about Napoleon Hill for a minute, about this idea of, and I still, I love this idea of making a decision quickly and changing your mind slowly. And there's a piece to it I didn't say. When powerful people make up their minds, they get really good at saying yes, and they get even better at saying no. Okay? Really good at saying yes, even better at saying no. Why? Because discernment is one of the tools of the most powerful people in the world. They are very discerning. And what they do is they get really good at looking at the thing that's in front of them and saying, no, I want to do that, or yes, I want to do that. Doesn't matter what it is. Why is that important? I don't care about the answer. I care about that you come up with an answer. It comes up with a vision of one day. It comes up with a vision. It helps to release all that bound up energy. It helps to release all that pent up energy. What happens is, how many of you have a ton of undecided stuff in your lives? Stuff you think about, you're deciding if you want to do. All of that is binding up life force. Energy that can be used for transmutation, for shifting another part of your life, for changing something else, for taking you in a new direction. All of that is holding you at bay. And so, what a great salesman does, and I'm going to be talking about our programs up here. Is that okay? You guys good with that? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm going to go into that now. What a great salesman does is they help you to get off the fence. Yes or no. That's it. They don't necessarily try to get you to a yes, but their goal is to get you to stop saying, I don't know, let me think about it. Because how many times in your life have you said, I don't know, let me think about it, and you're stuck, and your life's not going anywhere? Does this make sense to you guys? How many of that, as that stuff is still in the back of your mind, tying up energy? If you were to go back and untie all of those and make a clear decision, yes, no, yes, no, 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 yes, your whole life will change. How important is changing this area of your life? If you look at somebody like um, Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett has a 25-5. He says, write down the 25 most important things you want to do in your life. Put them in order. And then take out the top five and focus only on those. And then you take the other 20 and your whole job is to resist ever looking at the other 20 again and never doing anything with them. Because if you try to do all 25, you will go nowhere. And that's what most people do. They bounce around, a little tension over here, a little tension over here, and their life goes nowhere. So this ability to say no is just as important as this ability to say yes. I bring this up because you had a lot of great speakers this weekend. And I want to reference 
particularly Mark, and I want to preference particularly Robert in the back. They have all kinds, they're phenomenal coaches with all kinds of phenomenal programs and teachings. After this weekend, you know what you need to do to get to the next level in your life. And how many of you are sitting on the fence thinking, worrying, doubting, tying up all kinds of energy? How many of you have been thinking about coming to an event, maybe for Fearless, for years? We have people who sometimes take some two years to come to an event, thinking and saying, I'm going to come to this one, I'm going to go to that one. And that's two years later, their life's not going anywhere. If you're ready for a big change in your life, it's time to decide yes or no. I want to work with Robert. I want to work with Mark. I want to look at Mark's coaching programs. I want to look at, I want to work with Fearless. Make a decision and decide how fast you want to move. You only have so many years on this planet, right? <laughs>